Welcome. Welcome. The Shade in the, the Shade City. in the City. I'm Trees. It snows. And today we are jumping right back into Ready to Love. So we can have the weekend for three, y'all. Because it's <laughs> birthday weekend. How as I'm sure you know by now. <laughs> Um, but yes, guys, so please join us because it looks like it's going to be interesting. Even the name of the episode is called Backup Plan. So I am here for it. So yeah, I think it's supposed to be the number two. Oh, to yes, we did talk about that. It's going to be choice number two. So mm-hmm. let's get into it, y'all, and let's get shady. And make sure you hit that like button. <laughs> All right, we're in the gentleman's lounge. I don't know where this is. I can't pinpoint this location, y'all. Mm. You know, I told you it's DC Prime. Oh, thank you. You're on your job. I appreciate it. Um, so we see the guys meet up at the gentleman's lounge. Nephew Tommy tells them he done heard some things in these streets about what they've been doing around bonfires and truth for dares and things of that nature. Um and basically, he lets the men know that he wants them to take out their number two choice. What I I like the way he actually said it. So the foundation. Was I was getting to that. What? The foundation. And you it ain't lead up to it. Okay. You got to <laughs> I'll let to I'll it. let Nails do it since she's so passionate. <laughs> you know, sure. Look, he was like, he was like, imagine a, a storm of the century hit, right? And you lost your foundation. It just crumbled. Okay. Which one of these ladies you gonna rebuild with? I said, okay, okay. So, because yes, they the backup plan in number two, but it's like he's still. I don't know. It's like he still he still made it sound like uplifting. Like he did, but I don't know if you heard the part, and that's why I like why he also related it to foundation as well. Because if your foundation has cracks, or you got this bitch in the background that you still got feelings for that could come. And just dilapidate your whole shit. You need to fix that before you plan mm-hmm. on getting serious. So mm-hmm. I like the way what nails took from it because I took the same thing. But I I was like, okay, now I see what else you're saying too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tie up them loose ends. That's what he's saying. Mm-hmm. So we see Tori, and he's like, I didn't. As we know, he didn't really have a backup plan. Mm-hmm. His plan was Sabrina. He thought they was on board. And so it's going to be interesting as well, because even with Laverne, I'm interested to see who's going to be his backup plan, because we already know that he is head over heels for Ace. You know what? I'm actually so I actually like the fact that Clifton isn't comfortable with this. I like. Well, I think he's not comfortable because he knows that there is a genuine attraction to Dakia. I think that's why he said that. Dakia, he said it, it was an attraction. He said it just can't overpower what he has with joy. But he know it's like temptation. So why would well, I? You think that's why? I want to go around and tempt myself. You think that's what it is? Absolutely. If you weren't uh, bothered, if you weren't bothered by it, prime example, he could have went out with Carmen. Why do you think he's not doing that? Because he knows it. Oh, would it never mind? I don't like that statement again. That's not what I took from it. You stupid. Yeah, no. Mm. So okay, never mind. I I guess we'll see you guys. How <gasps> Here we, we are, still giving bitches out plates and shit. I guess we'll see how these dates go and who takes out who. I am interested to see y'all. All right, Shay Squad. So we see uh Eric and Carmen. You know how you, you know how you got you know how you pray before you read the Bible to get some understanding. Yeah, we need some prayer before we discuss this conversation that went down this this interaction because I am confused. I'm confused as hell. I'm confused and I'm upset. Look, you're confused. If, if, no, you're upset if you're confused for the right reason. <laughs> no, I well I'm see. That, but I'm still upset. I'm still highly upset by this 
the scene. I understand. I he knew the assignment. Mm-hmm. I get it. Um, now with Eric I, and Carmen, you know what? I'll save it for later. I'll save it for later. So basically, Eric takes Carmen out, and he she's like, "I'm nervous," you know. Um, and he's like, "Why would you be nervous?" And he's just like, "You know." Even us being here, like, it feels unfair to the process because I already know so much about you. Um, Then they basically, to keep it short and sweet, he says he's been wanting to express his interest in her. um, But, you know, people have hovered. And he hasn't been able to show as express himself as much as he would like. Now, that that's problem number one. That's problem number one for me. Because who are you implying that was hovering? I'm hoping that it's something that happened off the camera and it's not the situation that uh that we're thinking about that happened at yeah. in the kitchen with Dakia. Because Carmen. you know, you know, you know, we like you. You know, we, we like you and we don't want to not like you, but I like Dakia a lot more. So I really hope we not sit here bad mouthing Dakia after you wanted Dakia around. Just that part. So then I also did. So of course, Carmen's like, yeah, you know, and I, I basically, I told her to scoot on and you know what I mean? I know I can get what I want when I want it. And it was just, I, okay, there's nothing wrong with being confident. Yes, it is a competition. I totally get it. You're a boss, you know, BIT, I get it. So you're used to being able to make moves and have things go your way. He knows how you move. There, there clearly is chemistry there, which we saw before. I'm not going to deny that. What I don't like or what I'm seeing from Eric, and I hope this is not, I don't know if it's just editing or what, but what I'm seeing from Eric is that, oh, when you're in front of Dakia, it's one way, and then you get around Carmen, and it's another way. And everybody wanted to holler about how Laverne was messy. No, this is some messy shit that Eric is doing. This is some really messy shit. And so, I, I'm going to be honest, I was again, I already told you, I'm not here for grown men. I understand it's a competition. I understand you're out here to find love. But you you didn't need to downplay Dakia to express your interest in her. I didn't like that. The same way you didn't need to shit on Carmen to express, like, I don't like that. I don't like that, especially coming from a man. Like it, it gives me petty. It gives me messy. That gives me messy. But y'all let me know what y'all think, Shay Swap. What, what, okay, so I, I wanna, I'm, I'm gonna talk about where I'm confused, right? So Carmen asked him, um, anyone else feeling you, you know, in this process? And he talks about the first date he's had, which was with Zakia. And he said, you know, that they hit it off. And, um, and that he does like her. Yes. And, uh, like it brought up some situations. Right. And she's like, what? And the the look on his face made it seem like maybe he was talking about his dick, quite honestly, like maybe, you know, she got him hot, but then he said, uh, on another date and I'm not, this is where I'm confused. I'm not sure if he's still talking about Zakia. Or if he's talking, talking about another woman, right? He just said on another date. And he said that they leaned in to kiss him and he obliged. But um, I guess he wasn't really feeling it. So I don't know if this was still Dakia or another woman, but it clearly opened the door for Carmen, which I'm not surprised, to take shots. And she basically said it was a desperate move from a desperate woman. Now, if we want to talk about desperation, okay, we are not going to talk about Zakia. We're going to talk about the fact that you interrupted their whole conversation and made the room uncomfortable. The fact that you want your, with your you can't accept the fact that your eyes aren't blue, but let's that's let we won't go there. What uh, I I don't know. I just really hope he wasn't talking about Zakia in this moment. Um, especially if Dakia is still his number one, because let's keep in mind, this is a backup plan date. Well, okay? she doesn't know that, of course, but no, she doesn't know that, but but he does. Okay. Regardless, these two clearly have some sexual tension. Um, he said that he was glad that you know he took out on the date. And um he tells her, you know, you on top. 
And you know, I like it when you on top. There was a lot of sexual tension here. And I put it like this. If Nels was not on point with they have already done it, they clearly have wanted to if they didn't already. I believe they have. They said they've known each other. They vibed for years. What the fuck does that mean? And then Carmen lets us know that all the other ladies are appetizers and she is the main course. And if she wanted this man, if she said, you are mine, that would be it. I wonder Um, how she'll feel about that statement when she finds out that she was a number two pick for this date. Guess we'll have to wait to the reunion to see that. Um, So then basically he lets her know that she's at the top. He was like, yeah, um, you know, you're on top and I like it when you're on top. And that was clearly a sexual innuendo, but I didn't think much of that because that, clearly that's what they have. They're there to see if they have a connection, but clearly whatever relationship they have, whatever vibe they have is sexual. That's what they have. And that's why he's making all these sexual innuendos. Yeah. And see, that's what I'm saying. Uh, whatever we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm gonna let i'm gonna let the episode finish but, but we want to talk about desperation so then we get into we see demetrius meet up with tina at cheese steak i've always wanted to go here people me too and it looks super cute but you know my man makes a charcuterie board that i don't know if he would even let me pay somebody else Probably, to, i don't, I don't think so either do. so we'll see but um Demetrius asked Tina out and she comes off super apprehensive and super strong. Yeah, she's super surprised because she she didn't even realize that he found her attractive. He didn't even she stated like, you know, you didn't even speak. To I me. didn't even know you were I interested because you didn't even speak to me. Um, Basically, which he's like, yeah, you're right. I apologize for that. He's, and I don't I'm know, like he's just taking accountability for that, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she lets him know that uh he gives player vibes. Yeah, and he looks so offended. He was like player vibes. Like me? I get it. I understand Demetrius. I, I get it. And this is what I told Nels off camera. I said, Demetrius, the same person who goes off and sits by himself and ignores people, gives player. Cause I didn't I, I never I never got that vibe. Anytime I've seen Demetrius. It's either talking to Sabrina. I haven't even really seen him interact with any other other women outside of Precious and trying to get her together. But I've not seen anything romantic that implies romantic. So I didn't understand where she was coming from with the play. Well, she did explain her reasoning for thinking that. Um, and it, basically it's because the ladies... A lot of the ladies are really interested in him. And then at the table, she saw um, him kissing and nibbling on uh, Sabrina. But also she was under the impression because all these women are interested in him that maybe um, he's a player because he's telling them what they want to hear. And he's like, why do I got to be a player just because of that? Just because women like me. Why can't be, you know, transparent and upfront? And they just fuck with me because of that. Like, to know me is to love me, boo. Um, Then Demetrius lets her know that, you know, he's at the end of this process, which I actually really appreciate. I think he's one of the first men that has said this. At the end of this process, I am looking for a wife. Mm -hmm. A wife. I'm not here so we can date each other for a couple months and take pictures on the gram. No, I have intentions of making whoever I'm selecting my wife. Like, that's what I'm looking for. Um... So I could appreciate, that's why I said he's not out here talking to everybody. So I just, I found that strange, but anyway. um, And so he basically talks about, you know, how he's been through therapy. He feels like he's done the work. He has made mistakes in the past. And she loves the fact that he's taking accountability because as we know, she's been through heartbreak with her child's father um, after him being, you know, unfaithful to her while she was pregnant. So I'm sure for her, trust and accountability is a huge thing you know they decide they're gonna take more time to get to know each other and talk to each other and um and basically she wants to see what he's about 
And I said, uh oh. And I think Denise, I think Denise. Uh oh, Sabrina. Her. I think he's feeling her. You done messed around and pissed off Tori too? Woo, girl. Better, better watch your back. All right, y'all. So we get to Donovan. Donovan is a busy man, y'all. He is busy. He got a lot of number twos. Or maybe he knew. He need a, he got a one, two, I, and That's three, what it is. It, that's what it is. He has, he took advantage, which I'm not mad at Donovan for, because I don't think we've seen any of our other newbies do this. And maybe this is kind of a, a sign to our newbies that like, this is how you move when you're coming late in the game. You just got to date a whole bunch of them. Cause you need to <laughs> just try as many as you can. Um, <laughs> Now you can't be like what's his name Phil when you've been there since the beginning and you just out here dating just because you want to go on three four different dates. You don't remember that? Oh, shots shots fired. That's what <laughs> Phil did. I'm just saying. <laughs> and he had no excuse. He just you know. Um, so basically, Donovan goes on a date with Dakia, Carmen, and Sabrina. Um, this may get a little confusing because my notes are jumping around. I'm just going to touch on just the, like the scenes <laughs> of each, each conversation, each little boom. Um, so basically Dakia lets us know that when she sits down with Donovan, that if it was not, if he was there from day one, she would have made a beeline towards his ass. So clearly maybe that's her type. She thinks he's very attractive. Yes, she um, does. They seem, they seem to have a really good rapport, but however, it's not giving me, it's giving me real good friend. It's giving me the same connection that she had with Wiley. Where it was like, he would give her an eye or like it's flirtatious, but it's, it doesn't give me serious. Um, mm-hmm. Like they would just be really good homeboys, homegirls or whatever. Mm-hmm. So um, then we see Carmen. Uh, Carmen apparently we're celebrating her birthday. Happy birthday, girl. Um, so, we're celebrating Carmen's birthday, um, which I thought was super cute that he remembered. Um, yeah, he just, he, the guy just came out. He was like, surprise. And, you know, had her birthday cake. I thought that was super dope. So Carmen asked what, basically what his ideal woman is other than her. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, he basically says that, what did he say? I'm sorry. He said a woman that can adapt and uh Basically, her communication skills is on point. Okay, that's see, I didn't. I that's not in my notes. Thank God, I have a co-host. So, <laughs> um, then basically, Carmen lets him know that she is very competitive, and that anytime he is ready to play ball, and he's like, "Well, we can do one on one." And I was like, "Exactly." There was a lot. So, what I'm noticing. I'm just going to point it out. Let's talk about it. We talked about Precious. She she may not be giving it in the same way, but she's still giving that sexual energy in the exact same way. But that's what makes the difference, Trace. What? That's what makes the difference. There's difference between having a sexy conversation and throwing your coochie on the table. We learn on, a, on the date with Takiya, that his love language, shout out Donovan, we got something in common, um, <laughs> is affirmation, hello, and personal touch. Hello. <laughs> so basically. And what does the kid do? She go and touch she touches his knee. And she's she's like, she touching my knee, y'all. I just want to let y'all know she's touching my knee. I you said, snitch. okay, Zakia. You snitch. <laughs> so uh, then it jumps over to Sabrina and Donovan. Um, I think I'll let Nails do this one because I feel like I'm- You gonna... should, girl. I, I, shoot, I don't even know if I can handle this one. I need my fan. Where is my fan? Because it got hot. So we Ooh. learned, and I didn't know this, Sabrina's from LA as well. So they have that underlying connection and they've both been divorced. So already mm-hmm. it's- to the 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 basis, the foundation is there. Um, and she even talks about how it just feels so like natural. Like it just, you know what I mean? They um, immediately connected. Like she's having a good time. It was just, it was a lot, y'all. So 
basically he talks about he asks all of the ladies, but as uh, Sabrina especially her feelings on kids. And she lets us know that she does want to have her own children and she doesn't see a man with kids as like a bad thing as she sees it as the more the merrier and wanting to expand the family. I said, Sabrina out here with them answers, boy. Them answers. You need to be a politician, girl. What office you running for? Because I'll vote for you. Um, So then he asked Carmen about having more kids. Carmen says she has a 16-year-old son. She's not really interested in doing that again, which most women with a 16-year-old probably aren't. Um, But if she were to meet the right person, she's definitely open to the conversation. The conversation. I can... Dealing with someone who's a little bit older, I can appreciate at least it's a conversation. Um, So then basically we go, Dakia asks what his next moves are and talks, and they talk about using both sides of their brain, which I thought was a weird, that's why I said they was like, it was like home, but, but he likes that. He thinks it's attractive, but it was just like, I don't know. It just gave me friendly. It just gave me friendly and like real cool vibes outside of the putting the hand on the knee. You know what I mean? Yeah, she got, she, after that, she kind of got real touchy feelings. She like, you want to snitch? Snitch on this. You <laughs> Let me touch you all over. So, um, yeah, no, then and we talked about the cake that was bought out for Carmen, which I thought was super sweet. So, again, that shows a lot about Don, Donovan. Donovan over here you with the points. Up, you climbing <laughs> up the ladder, bro. He went to points with everybody here. All three days is like in Donovan. Donovan said, I'm not getting eliminated. Not this week. Well, it, he ain't getting eliminated regardless. But the point is. Next he got three week, votes. He got three women's votes. He, got he ain't going nowhere. No. Nope. Because uh, Carmen says she's definitely. She said he is definitely now got her attention and is in the running. I said, OK. We didn't see. Again, we didn't see Dakia say too much. Now we get back to Sabrina. Oh, let me pull out my fan again. Jesus. I, I think I should let you do it because I'm, I'm I feel like I need to clutch my pearls. Well, anyways, okay, hey, so basically, you know, he brings up um the night at the table. She's like, Oh, you you, you want to talk about that? Okay, bro. You know, fine. What's what's up? She's like yeah, exactly, you put me on the spot. Um, so you know. He's seen the kids. Everybody's seen the kids. We all seen the kids. We all, right? seen. We all seen the kids. So he wants to know, after seeing that, is there a chance for a new connection? Sabrina said, absolutely. Y'all. She said, she said, there's I've time. never seen, I'm going to just say this. If I was Demetrius or Tori, now maybe not so much Tori because she done already kind of broke his heart. But if I was Demetrius, it looked like she just threw this nigga under the bus and said, bye. And like. Look, when you catch the vibe, you catch the vibe. And he said that he like. Clearly they on that vibe. Look, we love LA. Look, I get it. She but said. Even your people are a vibe. So I get it. I exactly. totally get why the two of y'all connected. If y'all are both from, if y'all are both Cali people. I totally get it. Because I love Cali people. So she said there is enough time space and opportunity for her to get swept off her feet and let's not forget to mention that she said this is the best date she has ever been on donovan what you out here doing sir what you out here doing sir you ain't even this this is a restaurant date this ain't even like some super like you know what i mean she over here you know i started to say she over here what ready to throw you the panties and I put words in her mouth, y'all. Okay. She actually said, she said, would she sleep with him after a few more drinks? Yes, the fuck she would. She said, let me get my ass home, get the fuck up out of here, or so I'm going to end up in this motherfucker's bed. And we all know, well, at least most ladies should know, when you have a date like that, where you're that well connected, you probably could end up in his bed. So you should go home. <laughs> you should go home. Donovan ended it by saying he has a connection. He definitely has a strong connection with uh, Sabrina. Sabrina. Um, he believes that Dakia is a, she's a, she's a de- definite catch. And um, there's a lot of sexual tension with Carmen. So 
I guess we know who the snack meal and appetizer is from these days. Oh, okay. hey. Okay. Oh, y'all, it was a lot. So we see Dakia and Clifton, they go to the muscle bar, which I love. I've been into the one in Bethesda. It's absolutely great if you like muscles. And apparently they have oysters. I didn't even know that was on the menu. I was too into my muscles. But um, yes, so he offers her an oyster. And we learn that Dakia's like, I'm not really, that's not what I want to do. Um, but what I love about her is she gives me I'm willing to try, even if it's not something I rock with. And I like anybody with that type of personality. Um, so basically, he's like, well, well, are you scared that it's going to make you sick? And she's like, oh, no. No, 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 no. He didn't say sick. He said. Same shit. So when you get sick, most you of the don't time. You don't always throw up. You don't always throw up. If you get sick from a food, this, a food poisoning. This. this. Or a, this is the reason why she even brought up gag reflex. So that needs to be said. He didn't specifically say sick. He said. Anyway, so she says her gag reflex is pretty strong. And then he feeds her an oyster. Um, and she said that was the best oyster she ever had. And he said it was sexy as fuck. So we learn also that the reason why I guess um, Dakia is his number two is because he feels like she has a nine to five attitude, um, I guess, which means that he feels like she's very professional in and out of work, um, which I kind of took as he meant like she was boring. OK, um, but he learned a lot about Dakia on this date. Um, he learns that she makes T-shirts and she said, she said, no, I'll do it all. She was like, I'm gonna make you a big daddy t-shirt and what, I'm her t-shirt, say little mama, little mama. Yeah. And, um, she wants to go skydiving. She's been bungee jumping. She, uh, likes roller coasters and he is in complete shock. He's basically an adrenaline junkie. Exactly. And he's like, I didn't, I didn't know all this about you. Right? And, and she's she like, yeah, I, he still got the same draws from when he went skydiving. No, he said he had to change his draws. <laughs> oh, I thought he said he still kept the same draws. Like, no, she was shocked that he went skydiving. She was like, "How was it?" He was like, "Well, I had to change my draws." <laughs> I can only imagine. I want to go skydiving too, um, but I can only imagine that's some shit that might make you want to shit yourself. <laughs> so she asked him, you know, is it is it is a connection with you? Like, you know, like. Is it possible? I know you have a connection with, with uh, Joy, but is it is a connection with you even possible? And he's like, yeah, I'm still fair game. So I will say, let me retract my surprise about Sabrina and my shockedness about Sabrina, because clearly we have several people on this cast that feel that it is still game time. That we are still in the goddamn process. And motherfucker, if you want to sweep me off my feet, come right along. You got to right work along and try. Exactly. And um, he feels like they have a lot of sexual energy, which he has also uh, with joy. But he wants to explore, you know, this connection that they have further because he has just learned a, a lot shit about her. Load yeah. of things about Takia that he didn't know. So. You know, she 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 put on for her big daddy this time, I guess. Then we got Paul and Joy, who Joy in a confessional let us know this is right a, away, this is a clearly platonic, platonic day. date. And I guess he was trying to see where it was. I guess he knows that he was trying to still see if he could shoot a shot. And she lets you know that the, the basket has been taken down, motherfucker. There's the hoop is not there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> He's shooting in the air. Just. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, basically, she says it's a platonic date, and that's how she likes it. Um, you know, she's good with where they are. So he asked her, like, you know, don't like, don't you think it was like kind of bold? Like, for you to be like, you know, kissing on Clifton. She's like, bold. 
She's like, I've well, been, been wanting to kiss that I've been man. Been wanting to kiss that man. I said, you let it be known. You let it be known. And he and also he's like, well, you know, that puts people you on doing notice. That, you made us. You made a very big statement. Yeah, so that you put people Clifton, on notice, but to everybody at the table, and broke some hearts. And she's just like, well, basically, she's like, you know, he's he's like, are you like you're ready to go after like the one you're interested? She's like, yeah, like I'm tired of. I'm tired. You know, I'm bored. I'm bored with going through this process. I'm ready to just hone in and focus on the one that I'm interested in. And that's totally different from what we've seen this entire episode. Because everybody else is like, "Yeah, I'm free game. Come get me, bitch." And Joy is like, "No, it's just Clifton for me. I'm I'm going through the process, but I don't want to no more. I'm kind of bored with this process. I'm ready for just Clifton and Clifton out here talking about some. Yeah, I'm fair game. You know, you want me? Come get me." So Laverne and Ace are out on a date, um, which I was confused he, about because I was confused as morning, well because of uh, second choice and Laverne and we saw Laverne last episode tell Ace that that was it for him. That's who he wanted to be with. So I was confused. But go ahead. <laughs> um, so we see that he brings her a little gift. Apparently, she only uses a certain type of uh, moisturizer on her skin. So he brings it for her, which I thought was super dope, super sweet, super thoughtful. Um, And not even that, that means that you're paying attention because the fact that she only uses a certain type. Right? He's like, you know, I got to use it on you. I got to apply it to make sure it's, you know, being used properly. Look, Devon, I need some help, okay? I'm out here lotioning my own arms, okay? I need some help, sir. I need some help. <laughs> he over there lotioning that arm. Laverne, oh, please come lotion her. I can't reach it, okay? I need some help. <laughs> and basically, you know, she's like that he has a giving spirit. He's super thoughtful. And it makes her blush. It makes her happy. And I, and she I talks know. about how her love language is acts of service. That's my love language as well. So I completely get it. I completely understand. He gets up, he puts the napkin on her lap, and he. I thought that was super sweet. Right. Like, Lavar, where did you come from, sir? Where were you sent from? Okay. Where? Look, I bet you after watching this, the chicks that was hating on Laverne is like, hmm, okay. Giving him a second look, right? So then he feeds her. He's like, you know, as long as I'm here, you'll never go hungry. I'm like. <clears throat> Jesus Christ. OK, so she's like, you know. How do we move, you know, how do we move forward? And he's like, you know, basically just let everybody know you got shows. You got shows. You got shows. You got shows. This is what it is. And um, ain't no, ain't no, ain't no point in trying. Ain't no point in looking. This is it. This is. Oh, then we are moving on to Tori and Precious. Um, not, you know what? You talk about Tori and Precious. Okay. So Tori links up with Precious um, because, as we talked about in our first review of the first episode. Um, Precious and Tori had a slight connection over their mom, the relationship with their parents and so on. Um, and I thought that that was going to go into something. And Precious even says, um, I feel like we kind of got disconnected somewhere. Like it started off really strong and then it was like two ships passing in the night. So, and I guess just dealing with all their other connections. Now, they, there's clearly a lot of sexual energy and it's coming from both sides, so I'm not going to put it on one person. However, Precious, I tried to uh, defend you, girl. I did. Um, however, when you wore the satin shirt with the no bra and the nipples was on fleek, um, which Tori noticed and said that the girls are pointing at him, 
And she's like, oh, they're happy. Wow. So um, then, and which uh, Tori says, this makes him want to go into the fetal position. I said, oh, okay. Um, so then basically- That's about being a kidney smasher. And- he talks about being a- kidney smasher he asked her what makes her tick and she says she wonders if they're good friends fuck buddies or basically if they could be more or lovers yeah or i guess or lovers um but i actually i actually appreciated the fact that she tried to restart the conversation she, she, she said, uh, she said, let's, let's have that. Her. I feel like we saw that last episode where, uh, what's his name? Demetrius talks about how she is doing damage control after the fact. Um, and so I think once she realized where the conversation was going and the energy she was giving, because even when he's like, I want to order another drink, you can see she doesn't want that next drink because I don't. Yeah, she 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 said let's 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 have a redo, and she actually wanted like, to have what do you want a, to know about me? a like, serious conversation, and I appreciated that from her. She's like, you know, yeah. what do you want to know about me? And he says, let's get another shot. Um, and I did appreciate the fact that she did try to take it to a serious note, but the damage had already been done that that exactly so it's like he he can't take you serious it's like he can't take you serious i don't want to blame her attire but when it was the conversation in- and it was the attire but and and tori lets us know after going on this date with her he thinks she's cool but at the end of the day he realizes his strongest connection is still sabrina there's no spark yeah and he kissed her and he kissed her Now, granted, she didn't know where it was coming from and thought it was, you know, a little. But I think at that point, the way the date was going and once you get into kidney touching and talking about sex and and whether you make good fuck buddies or or friends or lover, I think that it is straight away from whether you make great life partners. So it's deliberation time. Yes. And all the men are meeting at the gentleman's lounge and they're giving their takes on their date and how it went. Um, Eric lets everyone know that his date would see. Well, I'm sorry, that he is still feeling um, Dakia and that he that's someone he could eat over and over again. So now I'm super confused. Maybe the date that he was talking about with the kiss was not Dakia, which I hope it wasn't. Um, because this would be giving something totally different. And then with Carmen, he said that that sauce goes well with his life. So it's not sounding like she's the main dish. She's not even appetizer. She's giving sauce. Anyways, um, so Demetrius. He's just a garnish. Mm. God damn. <laughs> that bitch is the basil on top of the Um, so Demetrius, uh, took Tina on a date as we know, and he said, you know, that they had a great interaction. She's beautiful. They had a lot in common. Um, he, he really liked her. He really liked her. And, uh, Clifton talks about his date with, um, Dakia and how he thought that she was just nine to five all the time, but on the date, you know, she let her hair down and he was able to see past that. Exactly. And he really liked it. Um, and Laverne, we know how Laverne feels about Ace. You know, he said that she and is- And I love Ace. when Tommy questioned him though. Sir, Ace is your second connection? Even nephew Tommy was confused. Okay. So, um, you know, he said Ace is peace. She is calm. And they're even planning um, holidays together. And yes, he did question- um, Somebody said, did you buy the ring yet? Right, yeah, he did. <laughs> um, he's like, Why is this your second connection? And he said that you know, he did have a connection with uh, with Joy, um, but 
this date gave him clarity. So I guess Ace now is his first connection, which I thought was from the beginning, quite honestly. And, you know, he gives a piece of advice to the men and lets them know, you know, to just express yourself and go after whoever it is that you, you know, you want, regardless to, you know, who's sake they claim on them. And apparently, you know, I know Demetrius for one was, I, you know, I, I've been doing that. I don't need no advice. And he, the man Le, and it, Laverne, Laverne was like, um, I was talking. I don't interrupt you while you talking like that's disrespectful. He like, I mean, I'm just saying, I, I don't, he was like, I'm making a statement. I was, Jesus. I was like, Oh my goodness. I mean, I don't know how this conversation went left. I don't understand what happened here. Um, but I'm glad that, you know, the men settled down and got back to it. And I think Tommy was too. They had to call security. Okay. Um, so then they then we talk, talk about, about who we don't want. They talk about, then they talk about their, uh, well, he asked Tori who their, his strongest connection is. And he says Sabrina. And of course, Demetrius says Sabrina. and But Tori said that he's not worried, even though we know what happened last episode. But we don't know because Demetrius seemed that, have eyes for somebody else now so we don't know but yes then they talked about who they are not feeling and is it like a general consensus uh it was demetrius donovan and tori all said precious uh feel like she's not genuine more like a sister in the friend zone and there's no connection um then laverne i'm sorry not laverne um paul no, 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 I'm sorry. It was Laverne. I'm, oh, Jesus Christ. Laverne mentions Sabrina that, you know, he's just not, just not interested. She doesn't do doesn't anything have any... for me. She doesn't fill my spirit, my soul. Exactly. I'm here for it, Laverne. I read your, <laughs> I read your Bible verses every day. Thank you. <laughs> Keep us uplifted, brother. So, look, see, she put lotion on her skin. We, <laughs> we got to do this ourselves. We need, we need some help out here. Okay. Um, Paul basically lied. And okay, said no, that- no, no. Let me do this one. Hold on. Go ahead. Go. I love, and this is sad, that Joy knew she had to do this and throw out a disclaimer before going on a date with you because clearly she knew who you were as a person. This motherfucker gets up at the gentleman's lounge and says he had to take Joy out to let her know that there wasn't anything romantic. Now, Shay Squad, I know y'all watched the episode. When did that happen? When did that happen? Nothing irks me more than a man that lies on his dick and just a man who lies, period. To make yourself look better. For what? For what? Just say you didn't have a connection with Joy, but you had to tell her that there wasn't anything romantic? Like you had to let her down easy. She wasn't interested in you. I'm done. Um, so apparently it was Paul, Eric, and Tori who all named Joy, basically stating there was no connection. And it's just friend vibe, um, basically from her. So I guess we know, or, you know, we're, we're getting an idea of who's in the bottom two. Um, Joy we know who's going home, but unfortunately, yeah. I, I, got I knew a great when idea Joy that made that person. statement when she said, I'm tired of doing this process, that she was going to be in the bottom two. I knew it. Woo. Y'all. So we get to elimination and we see Clifton sit down with Precious. And uh, give me a minute. Joy, sit down with Demetrius. Now, let me mm-hmm. tell y'all something right now. Joy done already told y'all. She is fed fuck up. Y'all better stop playing with Joy, okay? Yeah, she says she is confused as to why she is even on his date with Demetrius. She's like, we have, ain't got nothing. We ain't got no romantic connection. And, you know, Demetrius is down with her. And he's like, you know, I'm, ju- I'm just trying to see what's between us. She was like, you, you think there's something between us? Like, she was like, and he was like, well, yeah, you know, she's like, look. I'm be honest with you. There is nothing there. 
It's it, it isn't there. <laughs> that damn she said, and I really feel like you just here to start some shit. I said, how did it go left so fast? And he's like, so of course he gets defensive and he's like, start some shit. What? And literally, poor Demetrius, as we know, is just the messenger. Well, he, be, I he think ain't it's really because called her for a date, but I guess because he tried to bullshit her and make it seem like. No, I'm really, I think there's something between us. This is why I want to sit down and have this conversation. I with you. think that's so why we know that. we know Joy has had this conversation before where, you know, she was uh put in a position where she may have to send somebody home. So I think what it was was, you know, him talking about, oh, well, the guys feel like you're locked in and they just want to know if you're still open to a relationship. And that's where she's like, Do you even like anybody here? Because I think you're just here to start shit. Like, because she's already like, nigga, if you're trying to eliminate me, bitch, just eliminate me. Because you, you, you doing all this extra shit. You know what I mean? Like, she's like, I, yes, I, I, I'm, I'm about tired of this shit. I'm about fed up. And I do at some point plan to wean these niggas off of me. Like, I know where the fuck my head is. I know where my top is. And. Ain't nobody here that can change that shit. Basically. And um, I'm not mad at her. Know, she knows what she wants. So he he does finally let her know, you know, after she goes on her little rant a little bit. She was like, um, he's like, you're not, and you know, the pause, ready to end your journey. You know what I think is so crazy? Why is it always the motherfuckers that stay? That cuss somebody out while they think they about to get eliminated. Because they feel like they put in the work. And she was like, you know what? I'm sorry I killed the messenger. No, I'm not. God damn it, motherfucker. Should have just spit the shit out, basically. So now we know who the hell going home. Okay, we moving on to Clifton and Precious. And we are not surprised, okay? Precious says that she is excited that she's going on a date with Clifton. Um, because this is their first date and, but she feels like something just ain't right. And boo, I don't know what type of intuition you got, but you are correct. <laughs> okay. Um, so she's like, you know, this is our first date. He's like, yeah. What do I owe the pleasure? It's just you're going home. <laughs> I mean, he's like, you know, so. All the guys feel like you're a club girl. She's like, no, that's a narrative. That Demetrius yeah, is that pushing Demetrius on me. Made up. That goddamn Demetrius. He's just here to start <laughs> shit. Yeah, those Demetriuses. Yeah, no, he's just here to fucking start shit. <laughs> God damn it, Demetrius. Why are you telling everybody she a club girl, motherfucker? Shit. Let the bitch live. Let her fucking nipples point at her, motherfucker. <laughs> God damn it. Um, so he basically lets her know the general consensus is your journey is ended today, ma'am. Yes. She says she wouldn't change any motherfucking thing. Maybe when you run this shit back, you might change your mind. Or change your shirt. But let's There's a lot get, you need to change. Let's get into before we leave the episode, we go back to the ladies' lounge. And I was like, I'm shocked. This is right. Amazing. We go to the ladies' wine bar. With the, so we get to as the Tommy said, bar. the sexy six. Yes, there's six of them left. So then Zakia out of nowhere, everybody, Tommy asked how everybody is doing. And I think he did that on purpose. I think there was a reason why this, this ladies lounge happened so fast. Um, because apparently something has happened. Zakia lets us know something has happened between her and Eric. She said there was an incident between her and Eric. Um, basically when they first got together and first went on their date, they were filming each other and they hit the ground running. And she, she said there was a shift. Apparently whatever she was getting from him before she is no longer getting. And, um, I guess maybe they were talking on a consistent basis or whatever, Mm -hmm. whatever it was, he's not doing that shit anymore. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately 
She said she don't want to date him no more, basically. Well, thank you, Shay Squad. Yes, thank you yes. for tuning in, staying for with another us. review. I it's y'all, I'm just perplexed at how messy this is getting towards the end. Everything seems so calm and nice, and everybody was loving on each other. And now we have all these new connections and people. It was all good just about a week ago. <laughs> right? It was all good just about a week ago. So we're gonna see what next week has in store for us. Um, Looks like it's more drama. But thank you guys. Um, I am letting you know now, you will not see Force. You will not see B90 until later next week. We are officially going on the birthday break. I'm going to enjoy myself. So I love you guys. Make sure you like. Comment. Subscribe. And hit the notification bell. And you can always hit that cash app so your birthday girl can have you know, feel the birthday love, but the like button and the subscribe is enough love for me, honestly. <laughs> so um, thank you guys so much. And we will catch you guys next week. And, you know, follow us on TikTok, Instagram to catch the birthday festivities. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Front, back, side to side. Make it shake, shake, shake. sure you go like and subscribe. Ah, front, back, side to side. Make sure you go like and subscribe. Hey!